So do you have a lab partner yet? Is there a Jim Wang here? Wang. This is Wayne Chang. Wei Chen. He's a new student and he's Chinese, like you. He's going to tag along to all of your classes. I found seats for us. Come on. Except in math. He's way ahead of you in math. So I absolutely loved this series because it's got so much stuff going on. You've got the mythology elements. You've got the family stuff that's going on. You've got all kinds of things that are constantly in every episode. But what I really appreciated is that this is a show with teen characters at the center, but it doesn't feel like it's talking down to the audience. It feels very realistic. The characters feel real. And the two of you have such a great chemistry on the show. And Ben, like to start with you, you're kind of like centering all of these storylines around you. How do you kind of keep that all straight? Yeah. Um, well, I, you compartmentalize. You <laughs> you just, you, you read your part and you figure that out. And then, you know, you trust all the other brilliant actors. And because, you know, it, it is, yeah, in a way, the show is four, three or four, depending on how you look at it, separate storylines that are at first moving in parallel. And then they start sort of talking to each other Right. And then finally they start becoming one. And for me, it's like understanding what my track is for Jin. That's actually very easy. It My track is be an awkward teenager. <laughs> um, and I yeah, and I had to do a lot of research. Um, I had to, I, you know, read, read a thousand texts um, to really embody. Yeah, it definitely uh, wasn't all right on the surface. It definitely right wasn't already there from day one. But yeah. it, it sort of is like just live in that and react how you would to all of the crazy things happening around you. So when you are, when you're a teenager, everything is happening for the first time, right? right? First crush, first kiss, first dance. But in this case, it's also first time Oscar award-winning actress crashing through your ceiling and telling you <laughs> stuff about heaven. So it's, it's just, you keep the center of that character and you just go. And Sydney, when your character first comes on screen, I'm thinking, okay, I hope this isn't going to go the cliche direction where she is going to be just like every other character we've seen in countless TV shows. She's such a great character. She's very real. She's not mired in stereotypes or anything like that. Did you have fun playing this character? Absolutely. I remember while we were filming, that was one of the things that I was so happy and grateful for was the phenomenal writing is that she's at least initially written as this sort of one-dimensional all-american perfect girl because we're looking at the story through jen's eyes but as the story continues on she gets to be like an actual person which was really nice because as an actor a lot of the time at least as as a, a young uh, actor you're playing the the cute girl or the sister or the girlfriend or the daughter um and it's very one note a lot of the time and this was sort of the first role for me that that wasn't and there were like complicated feelings and and things to really uh delve into and show the audience um which was was really fun and and a first because i feel like that's that's kind of rare for for yeah for women actors at least and what i really love about this entire cast is i mean you're You've got your story that both of you are in. You got a lot of scenes together, but this is such a huge, massive cast of talent. You've got Chinese actors from China. You've got Chinese actors from America. You've got people that are just doing some of the best work that we've seen that don't always get recognized for it. And you get to share scenes with quite a few of them. Uh, ben, for you, what do you think was the most like jaw-dropping moment being a part of this series? Honestly, it was when I watched it for the first mm -hmm. time when you're making it you see it in pieces mm -hmm. right and you live your track um and you know about all this other crazy stuff that's going on you know like you said there's a ton of incredible actors in the show i only had the pleasure of meeting like a small portion of them honestly um but i knew the other people were going to be in this show and i knew what they were going to say right because i had the script but in your mind you can't picture what it's going to feel like to have all of that come together it's very and, disjointed while you're filming right and having it seeing it weave together expertly into like a co cohesive whole um this like what feels like a massive story with a million different moving parts coming together it's 
it really, uh, it was really moving. I, I, I cried. I like, I was crying the first time I was watching the first episode. Um, and I, I still don't know why. I think I was just like really overwhelmed by seeing all of this stuff that we've been working on for so long come together. And Ben, you got to do some more physical work here, some more stunt work, a little bit more of the action that's going on. So I don't have any doubt that it will, but for a season two, when that happens, Sydney, do you uh, expect yourself to get involved in any of the action? That's what I've been saying all day. I want a fight scene. Kelvin, if you're watching this, I have been talking, I want to do a Freaky Friday body swap with Wei Chen mm -hmm. and have a fight scene with the staff. And right. I think that that, I don't think people would enjoy that personally. I think it would I be would pretty awesome. That. I would enjoy that. I want to see you swinging a staff. I may be able to help. What's going on? I'm not from this world. I need your help with my quest to stop the uprising. As a parent, I really connected with your characters and everything that was going on from a relationship standpoint, as well as as a parental standpoint. And Chinan, for you, you've been in so many projects and you've played villains, you've played scientists, you've played doctors, but this is such a powerful performance here as just like a dad. What did you do to channel this character? <laughs> Well, uh, first, firstly, uh, thank you. I, I think uh, a lot of credit has to has to go to the the originator uh, of the graphic novel, Jun Yun Yang, and then and then you know the showrunner Kelvin Yu and and Dustin uh, Daniel Cretton and all, the whole team of writers. Um, I think this project also found me at at a very peculiar time in my life you know I think I'm at a particular age where there's a lot of contemplation about mortality and 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 you know fatherhood and and being a son and and all these big questions so I think it is just a confluence of you know my personal experiences a great script and and what's actually in the air right now, which is uh, an interest in our culture and our heritage. And Yenyan, for you, you're you're so good in this. I love this performance so much. And it just feels like it's like every emotion you could possibly convey, you've got to do. You've got humor, you've got the emotional depth. Was this like a really challenging performance for you? It's, it's yes, of course, it's every character is challenging. And and it's it was it was a great pleasure to work with all my co-actors and all the creators because they are so talented. They 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 bring out the best of me, I've got to say. And and because of them, I'm able to do my best of the best. I I I I I kind of I really really I'm really grateful because this is my first project in in the USA and and I meet all these great people like and how to top that. Now I'm worried. <laughs> You know, people love this. It's good for you. Right. This one looks like it's giving me the thumbs up. <laughs> there really aren't very many projects like this. Does this feel special to you that this is now coming onto the airwaves for a big audience? Very, very. It feels very special because I think it not only speaks to a particular group of people, you know, I think great art uh, or creations do not only speak to the people that is created for it extends beyond that and it expands extends into the universal and i think there's so much about it that speaks to anyone really uh wh whatever your background whatever your race whatever your your history personal history you know and i think this is where this particular show is so unique yeah i can't wait for it to come out yeah i think everybody's gonna love it and what i really appreciate is that it wasn't Sometimes when we see shows, they have all the characters are always speaking English or they have them. This is kind of, it weaves in and out where it's just kind of that natural thing where you're speaking English and then it switches into Chinese and it doesn't feel like it was made for just one particular audience. It's for everybody. But what I didn't see this season was either one of you getting to do any of the supernatural action sequences. <laughs> if the story continues for season two, do you know if there's going to be any of that in store for either one of you? We have we have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> we'll leave it to the so-called uh, gods, right? Yes. I mean, so. <laughs> 
So I'm a huge, massive fan of Into the Badlands, and oh, they- it's such a great show. And at any point when you were entertaining joining this project, did you ever have reservations of taking part in two versions of the same story? Not really, because this is really a very different take and a different version. And Into the Badlands was very loosely based on the Journey to the West story in some ways. Um, what we did take from that story was that it's about a journey of enlightenment. Mm-hmm. And so instead of being like a rebellious, like ornery teenager monkey going, becoming enlightened on this journey, you had you had Sunny, which Sunny Sun Wukong, right, Sun, um, going from a bad guy, being a bad assassin to becoming enlightened on this journey and becoming a good guy, right? Um, so that was the loose interpretation of it. And so this one is really more about, you know, identity and fitting in and like, you know, the crazy hormone stage of being a high school teenager, but added to the fact that we're putting in this Chinese mythology to kind of guide this kid along. And so um, I think that made it different enough for me that it didn't really conflict at all. Um, and then to play this version of Sun Wukong is also different than Into the Badlands and that he's like an older father now and he's dealing with a son that's growing up and trying to be his own self displaying some aspects of monkey king when he was young and that he doesn't like seeing that you know yeah. you know you're always annoyed by your your reflection of yourself and your children sometimes and and you wish you could change that and he's trying to change that with his kid but he's also at the same time trying to allow him to grow and and develop on his own and he's coming across that realization while this story is happening right as well as dealing with this like war that's going on in heaven and so it really is this kind of idea of like a parent dealing with you know, a career and family and trying to find that balance. So that I think that aspect of it made it so different than um, Into the Badlands that it, it, it kind of separated itself out by itself. And you got to do a lot of the action. And I really appreciated the, the parent-child dynamic in the story. But that episode, the flashback episode, is so much fun. Uh, what was it? Did you really enjoy doing the more humorous aspects of the story? Yeah, because it really made the um, Monkey King's character much more three-dimensional. And that also allowed audiences that are not familiar with the Journey to the West story to get a a little idea of what that was like. And maybe that will inspire them to go watch one of the various versions of Journey to the West and get familiar with that that Monkey King. But it was really cool to play, you know, much younger character and then a much older character and kind of show him in a very three dimensional light and show that his journey he's changed over time. And this is how he's gotten to be the kind of more stoic, serious version of himself and that he wasn't always that way, you know. Right. And the makeup effects are obviously very different depending on the version of the character that you were playing. What was it like doing a lot of this work with all of those makeup prosthetics on? It was, I mean, I have to be real with you. It was tough. It was like really, really tough to be, you know, show up three hours early for work and go through all the makeup we did. When I, when I accepted the role, I totally didn't think about that at all. I was like, yeah, I'll do Monkey King. And then I realized like all the work, extra work that's involved in, in, wearing all this prosthetic makeup and the team did an amazing job like once it was on and on all set like when I looked in the mirror it it really felt lifelike it moved with my face and it didn't feel like it was restricting anything or hiding anything and so I felt really comfortable with it so it was a cool dynamic to have to really kind of disappear behind the makeup and go into the character but then also have aspects of me shine through it as well was really really cool it was the first time I ever done prosthetic makeup like that to that degree before and I really, although it was tough and hard work, I, like I had a good time doing it because it was cool to show, you know, through that, it's very easy to show like a younger version and an older version. And then the earth version, you know, there's all these different versions of him that we get to see on screen. And usually you don't get to do that on, on a show. And what I found most uh, exciting about this project is you've got actors from China, you've got actors that are American, you've got a blend of all of these people, different generations. What did it feel like being part of such a massive cast like this? Yeah, it was so cool. It felt really special because it it kind of was a conglomeration of everything that I've experienced through my film career. You know, I started in Asia working there for 20 years. I came back here, started working on American productions. And then here I am working on a very distinctly Asian American production, which is so different than either of those experiences. And that a lot of these people had similar experiences of working, you know, in different areas and different parts of the world, and then coming together to work on this and having a collective shared experience that we all knew 
what this story was and what we experienced in various different forms of what these main characters had gone through in life and that we could kind of bring that to the table with ex shared experience, but also know that we're doing very something special here. And all of us like work really hard to bring our best foot forward on this because we knew that this was a, a rare and special opportunity. To start out with, absolutely love this show. It is oh, so much fun. You. It's a blast. And it's one of the things that I was talking to Daniel back when uh, Into the Badlands came out, I was like, oh, I got to find the journey to the West. And it's so hard to find a good mm. English language adaptation of the story in its full. And I was glad when I found this graphic novel before the series came out. And Gene, I just, from your vision on the page to what we're seeing now, can you believe how big this series is compared to what you originally envisioned? It's amazing. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of shocking. And it, it, uh, all the credit goes to uh, Melvin and the, and the team he's assembled, it's, especially Kelvin Yu. Kelvin Yu is the showrunner. He really poured his soul into this project, you know? And I think what he did was he took the graphic novel, he took the essence of the graphic novel and he really expanded it into these worlds, into the world mm -hmm. of Jin on earth and then also the world of uh the monkey king in heaven uh, it's uh it's breathtaking to see the amount of work that they did and it is it's pretty amazing and melvin i guess the biggest question i have is taking the source material did you always envision this from the beginning as being a multi-season story or was there ever a point where it was just going to be a standalone like limited series no i i thought that you know um i i thought of it as a multi-season series i i did i think the material, it's so personal and the characters and point of view are so strong that it, I sort of felt like it lent itself to being opened up, you know, in terms of the worlds and just like the big fantasy sequences, like the idea of like, you know, uh, the very personal point of view of Jin and just the monkey king. You know, like I, I sort of, I grew up watching those uh, shows on TVB, you know, with my, my parents and grandparents and just to have that collide. And, you know, that was sort of the brilliance of, of the graphic novel, you know, and, and being able to sort of take that and, and, you know, go get the guy who did Shang-Chi and, you know, just like, then he brings along some global movie stars and, you know, it's, it's kind of surreal and awesome. And Gene, seeing this brought to screen is one thing, but seeing such a massive cast, you've got Chinese actors from Asia, you've got uh, Chinese actors from America, you've got this really multicultural smorgasbord of talent that's here, and some of the biggest names you could think of, did you just, could you imagine like some of these actors in these roles when you started to hear who was involved? No, no, I remember getting called. <laughs> From uh, Melvin saying that Michelle Yeoh was signed up to play Guan Ning, the goddess of mercy. I I don't know. I, I didn't totally believe him because I was like, come on, <laughs> right? how's that going to happen? And he told me he got Ki Kwan. I was like, come on. And then like, I, I've had multiple calls from Melvin over the last few years. Mm -hmm. I did not believe him. And then it actually came true. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, Michelle, Ki, Oscar winners. I, I think one of the most amazing gets that we we have on the show is, is Daniel Wu. A, a lot of people don't realize this in America, but Daniel is an international superstar. Like in Asia, he's such a big deal that he can't go to a restaurant without getting mobbed. He's like a Jackie Chan level star mm -hmm. there. Yeah, he's awesome. He's an Asian American. He grew up in the Oakland uh, area. Yeah. area. Yeah. And, and his story uh, having to go to Asia to become a megastar and then yeah. making his way back to America. It is in a lot of ways indicative of our journey as a community, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Our, our journey as Asian Americans in media. Yeah. And there's so many actors here that I've been a fan of as a movie buff and a TV buff for years that, you know, like Chin Han and all of these people yeah, that yeah, you've yeah. seen in small roles and they get to do such phenomenal work here. And I guess, you know, it's never a certainty to see future seasons, but for either of you, is there anybody that you have in mind that might be joining the cast if there is a season two? Are there any dream cast that you'd hope to include? Oh, man. Um, I, I, I'm going to uh, refrain. There, there's there's a ton. I, I don't want to do this, Alex, <laughs> but, uh, but if, if, if that's okay. But uh, there, there's a ton. I, you know, the whole thing um, was trying to create uh, the Asian American All-Star Game, you know, in front of and behind the camera. And... Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of Hall of Famers out there that we're gonna we can we can add to it. You know, um, I'm just uh, crossing my fingers that we uh, we get to do it again. 
So freaking unbelievable. Everything is more connected than you think. Huh. Yay.